questions? Yeah. Um, I'm having trouble with number four on this one here. It's number four? Oh, this is like the doctor one. That is, yeah, the diopter lid is on the distance away. Right. And then what are the position? What's the position on the diameter? Yeah, it gives you the object location. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's um, there's a little bit of. I assume that maybe the issue. Okay. So first of all, I have to give you the quantitative formula, which always would help out. Um, and I assume that the other thing is is the uh, Doppler. Yeah, I didn't know the negative two point three one over in yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's an optometry term. Um, shoot, I think uh, diopter. Is that right? That's how you spell on. Okay, that's how I would spell on there. That must be right. Um, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, an optometry term that is generally. I have no idea why the optometrists use this, um, but it's used to indicate. Sometimes they'll use the word power or the the strength of the lens. Now that's not the physics definition. That's the you know optometry kind of side of things. Um, but diopter, diop, diopter. Uh, if you want, this is the same thing as one over the focal length. So when you look at a like, if you go to the optometrist and they say, okay, well you're at uh, plus 0.25 dopplers on your right eye and negative 0.5 on your left. Okay. What they're trying to say is how far, what kind of lens your eyes in order to produce the image in focus. So uh, for for Kat, you said you said you had negative two point three. Okay. So for your particular problem, it gave you a value of negative two point three for the diopter. Uh, that's equal to one over the focal length. So it's saying that. Negative 2.3 is equal to your one over your focal length. And so it's a way of indicating what the focal length of your lens is. Again, I have absolutely no idea why optometrists use this. I just know they do. So I thought, OK, I should at least uh, throw that terminology in there in case you ever run across it. But at that point, you have the focal length, you have the object distance. And so I think you should be able to run run like a herd of turtles <laughs> or a bale of turtles. I guess it's like a herd of zebras. Does that kind of get you going? Yeah. You didn't say that very confidently. No, I just have trouble visualizing all of this stuff. This is so yeah, yeah, yeah. There, multiple colors help. Is is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. In fact, maybe I should skip over. Well, I, I've had other examples, but I better skip over those for a second. Uh, so, what's the difference between a real image and a virtual? So, a real image. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. A real image is a location where the actual beams of light physically cross. Okay. So, I, and I, I failed to mention this going along with Cassie's comment about lines. Um, I, the convention is that solid lines represent the rays, the real, the real beams of light. Okay. So, a real image is always formed by the intersection of the actual beams of light. In other words, so the solid lines cross somewhere in space. And uh, one of the consequences of that is, I, I think I mentioned this, for example, if you place a photographic plate at that location in space, you will actually get an image because the actual light rays do intersect there. 
A virtual image is an image that is formed due to where the beams of light appear to originate from. So in other words, when we had several situations, for example, the diverging lens, the, the purpose of a diverging lens is to cause light beams to become further apart, to separate even more. So after the light rays, the solid lines, for example, on this right hand image, after the solid lines pass through the diverging lens, they're going to get further separated. That's the whole function of the diverging lens. What you could do, though, and this is like the fish in the fish tank when we're hunting with Tom Hanks, is if I only gave you the result, imagine that I hid this section of the problem from you. If I just completely hid that and only showed you these three rays that have come out of the lens. If you were to backtrack those three rays, this red ray, this magenta one, and this blue one, you would project them as originating from this location in space where that tiny gray arrow is. And so we would say that because those rays appear to originate from that location in space, that is where the image is formed. But the rays didn't actually come from there, right? They appeared to originate from there, but they didn't actually come from that location. That would be the, the virtual image. So the actual rays didn't originally focus at that place. Yeah, so if I, and I imagine if I just hid this all from you, right? If I just hid this side from you and said, well, where did these three rays original appear to originate from? You just draw a line backtrack and say right here. And how do you know, like, I know the question it asks if it's really virtual, how without like seeing the dotted lines and stuff, just using numbers, how do you know it's really virtual? Is the image, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might actually have this on another slide, but is the image distance positive or negative? We'll tell you if it's a virtual or, a, or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this goes into some, I think I have it on another slide, but since the, issue, the question is here. Um, For mirrors, I think I had this. Uh, do I have a blank slide here? Okay, somewhere here. Okay, we'll just use this. Uh, for mirrors, we, uh, you know, either convex or concave. Okay. For mirrors, um, the idea is is that everything on this side. One way to say it is that this side represents the positive direction. So regardless, the, the side of the mirrored surface is always the positive direction. So if your object is over on, well, your object better be on this side, otherwise, you, you know, there's going to be issues, right? You, the object better be on the reflective side of the mirror. Okay? But if your image is also on the reflective side of the mirror, then both of these DI and the original object distance, both of those are going to be positive. Same thing happens for the uh, concave mirror. If your object is on the reflective side and your image is on the reflective side, um, those numbers will both be positive. Now, if your image happens to be on the non-reflective side, you should end up with a negative value. So positive is towards the reflective side. If your image is on the non-reflective side, you'll end up with a negative value. So that's one way to tell if the, the image is virtual or not. From, from an algebraic, from the ray diagram, you can say, okay, well, do I use dashed lines to actually get the intersection point? 
but from the algebraic standpoint, if you end up with a negative number, then it's a it's an it's a virtual image. Yeah. And I think I actually I think I mentioned that for the uh, I mentioned it's in a slightly different context, but the same thing occurs for the focal points. Or the, the focal point of this curved mirror, since it's convex, the focal point is over here somewhere. And so you'll actually use a negative value for the focal point. Whereas over for this concave mirror, the focal point will be on the reflective side, and so it'll be a positive value. So you the same thing. Uh, so I better put F here is going to be less than zero. For this situation, F is going to be greater than zero. And I know I got that on the slide, but uh, so uh, let's see for uh, good. Is that, is that okay? Now we have to we have to say uh, I have to be careful because the question then becomes well what about lenses because mirrors I said reflect if it's on the reflective side it's positive it's on the not reflective side it's negative but what do you, what do you do for lenses because lenses don't have reflective and non reflective sides right what do you do for lenses um, if I recall correctly so let's let's do it like this again. I should just jump to that slide, but OK, I know I've got a slide in here, but if I recall correctly. This 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 probably isn't this is how I think of it, um, which is probably not the best way, but I'll tell you how I think of it first and then we'll see what I actually wrote down on the slide. Um, but I think of it as if your object is on the side that the light comes from, then it's positive. So I tend to draw all of, this is completely arbitrary. I tend to draw all of my ray diagrams going from left to right. I'll start with that. So I, I draw all of my ray diagrams as the lot of rays coming in from the left hand side going to the right. And so I think of if my object is on the same side. OK, that's a better way to say it. If my object is on the same side that the light is coming from, it's positive. Okay. So my distance here should be positive because my object is on the same side that my light rays are coming from. Now, for a lens, where would you expect the image to be formed? On the side where the rays are coming from or where they're going to? Going to. Okay. So, I mean, light passes through. Light passes through a lens, and so you would expect the images to be formed on the, the opposite side. Okay. So, if your object is on the side of the lens where the light is coming from, the object's distance is greater than zero. And similarly, if your image is on the side of the lens where the light rays are going to, then it's also positive. DI is positive. Now, if for some reason, you end up with your image on the side where the light rays are coming from. Say, if you end up with your image over here, that seems not that that like right, that's like weird. Like the lens is to perform an image on the opposite side of the lens. So, if your image is on the same side of the lens as which the light rays come from then your image is going to be negative. So it's almost exactly the opposite of the mirror. Right, the mirror, if the image is on the reflective side, then it's positive. If it's on the non-reflective side, it's negative. 
for the lens, it's exactly the opposite. If it's on the opposite side of the lens, it should be positive. If it's on the same side of the lens as the object, it should be negative. And you're probably already asking yourself, how in the world could you ever have a negative object distance for a lens? Oh, wait. For a single lens, it's pretty hard. But for multiple lenses, you can do it. Right. So remember I said, once we kind of get a handle on single lenses, you can start stringing multiple lenses together. It's a series of single lenses. What can happen, though, is that you can end up with the image of a second lens placing the object of the next lens on the wrong side. And so you'd use a negative object distance to kind of work your way through that. To be continued, I have one of those set up already. I don't know if that helps clarify or if that just models it more. So I guess another way to say it, if it's on the side of the focusing element that you would expect it to be on, it's positive. If it's on the side of the focusing element that you wouldn't expect it to be on, it's negative. But that's very, that's very less, it feels more intuitive, but it's a little less uh, rigorous. Or maybe not intuitive at all. No? Or is it just Monday? It's okay, you guys get Friday off. Right? Seems, well, instead of instead of giving me a third, you get to give me a half today. Right? So you guys should be bouncing off the walls already. No? Wasted all the good, good enthusiasm on him. Big Daddy? Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> and you're this, you're like this flat today, even though you didn't have class? Oh, now you should be giving me like, well, instead of 50% because you get Friday off, you should be giving me like 100% because you didn't have a 50% from last class. Yeah, okay. I don't know if that helps. Um, if you didn't like going through how to explain the numbers, that would be appreciated. But if you don't, I understand. I have no idea. Uh, well, hey, here's a nice half full equation that might help us doing the numbers. Okay. Uh, so we just got a. Uh, so you said something like a negative 2.3? Okay, so we already had that. Okay, well, we'll just mirror equation. There we go. So this looks the same for the lenses as well. So so you have you have one of two ways you can go at this. Okay, thinking of these positives and negatives. I'm sorry, slight, slight by line and then we'll get at it. Uh, I like to think of the positive and negatives as I kind of tried to verbally just give them to you. And then this equation looks the same. So this equation will look the same for the lenses and the mirrors if you take kind of those sign conventions into account. Oh, if they're on the side that I expect them to be on, great. If they're on the side that I don't expect them to be on, I put negative signs in. And then this equation, this 1 over d naught plus 1 over di equals f, will look exactly the same for both lenses and mirrors. The other way to do it is to say something like the 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 the, um, the left hand side is positive, the right hand side is negative. Right, the left the left hand side of my element is always positive, the right hand side is always negative. And you can do that; that's fine. It's just that this equation will look different for lenses. Then there'll be an extra negative sign in there. I believe uh, the extra negative sign will pop in right here. 
right? Because the images would appear on the left hand side of the lens, or excuse me, the right hand side of the lens. And so if you define the right hand side as being negative, then you have to put an extra negative sign in to you know, make everything work out. I prefer to keep one equation and be thinking about the signs implicitly. That's just me. I think it'll work out the same either way. And truth be told, I'll have to go back and look. I don't remember how different books treat it. I think I've seen it both ways, which is really confusing because you think you know the equation then you see a different book and you're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then you have to go and look and see what their sign conventions are. So I think the way I've given it is consistent with the book, the our book, not all books. Okay, uh, so uh, you said uh, the Doppler was negative 1.3, 2.3. So the Doppler was negative 2.3. And what did you say the object distance was? Okay, so the object is 25 centimeters away, 0.25. Uh, do. Okay. Hopefully, I don't screw this up, which is not beyond me. I mean, I should be at fifty percent too. Now that I think about it, if I require you guys to be at twenty or a hundred percent, I should be at fifty. Well, because you didn't have your instrumentation class, I still had my two classes before this. Yeah, but I'm working. Huh? Working. <laughs> Then why do you get so happy if I cancel a class? Uh, I never did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I try to give 100%. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, so basically, we're, we're asked to find what the image distance is, right? Where the image is formed. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is okay, we have to convert this dop Doppler into a focal length. So if the if the Doppler Doppler is negative uh, two point three, I always say Doppler instead of Diopler. I don't know why, or maybe it's Diopter. I think there's a T in there too. Okay, I pronounced that wrong. Okay, so don't follow Greg's pronunciation on it. The optom optometrist thingamajubaber. So given the optometrist thingamajubaber, we can find the focal length, namely that it's one over two point three. And notice I've kept the negative sign in there. Okay. Convention for lenses is that convex, the focal length is greater than zero, and concave, the focal length is less than zero. Or a different way to say it, if you don't have a symmetric lens, which we will talk about later on, I'll give you the equation today. If you have an asymmetric lens, a negative focal length means that it is a diverging lens. If you have a positive focal length, it is a converging lens. It will force the beams of light to converge. So that's more of a general extrapolation. Sure, if you have a positive focal length, it is a converging lens. Forces the beams of light to intersect. If it is a negative focal length, it is a diverging lens. After the beams go through, they will separate slightly. They will move further apart, passing through the lens. Okay. And the reason I say that is uh, right now we're thinking about symmetric. You know, both sides are, this is what's called a biconvex or a biconcave. But you could have all other situations. You could have, say, a convex front surface and a concave back surface, which is more akin to what your glasses are. So it's not as straightforward. Is this a converging or a diverging lens? We'd actually have to apply what's called the thin lens equation to find out. And if the thin lens equation gives us a negative number, it diverges if it's a positive number, it converges. And I've got an example about four slides from now to work us through that. Yeah, you say, hey, Greg, these, my glasses are not a symmetric lens. I agree. It's got a curvature on the front face. It's got a curvature on the back face to make sure that it, um, to correct for either your near or far sightedness. Okay, where is the capital B? 
Capital D, uh, I just use that as, uh, I just use capital D here to represent diopter. I do not know if that notation is uh, standardized. What is a diopter? Yeah. Uh, the diopter is defined as one over the focal length. And again, I give that to you only because optometrists use it. So if you go and get your eyes checked out and they if they drop this term diopter on you, they're basically telling you the focal length of the glasses required for you. Or if you end up in optometry school, I have zero idea what people's career paths are. I just know that it used to be a lot of people were interested in like pre-med. I don't know if that's still the case. Like PT or OD or dentistry or nursing. Get the heck out. That might be what you're interested in. Where are you guys interested? Where are you going after this? I mean, you got a year to go, but where are you going? Research. Research? Okay. You probably won't see this in research, but you never know. Where are the rest of you? Vet? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, vet school. Okay. Okay, I gotta get more animals in. I see a nodding, but what does that mean vet school? No. <laughs> where, where to then? Uh, two years, but research. Research, okay. Well, you can impress your friends in research. Drop a diopter on them, and they're like, what the heck are you talking about? And the rest of you are just going to mom and dad's basement. Is that what's going on? Like, I mean, that's not a game plan, by the way. That's like a, a three-month holdover, but not a game plan. Right, where, where are the rest of you going? Med school. Med school? Okay. Oh, okay. So you guys going up to Purdue or down to Tennessee? Does Tennessee um, have a program? I want to go to NC State. Okay. Okay, so research triangle. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Raleigh. Pre-med. Pre-med? Okay. Yeah, okay. I see, I see. You might see it in the pre-med, I don't know for sure. I assume, do you have to do optometry clinicals or anything? Uh, okay, no. Okay, I don't know. I mean, my brother did PA school, so I know a little bit about the rotations, but I assume they're slightly different. Um, not, not 100%, I understand. Yeah, he's not a doctor, nor does he claim to be. So, uh, anyway, okay. So yeah, that's how you tell a more general sense. If it's a negative focal length, it's a diverging lens. If it's a positive focal length, then it's a converging. Oh. And I always forget which one's which for nearsightedness and farsightedness. Oh. To be continued. So at this point, uh, we have a positive focal length. We have a or excuse me, a negative focal length, a positive uh, object distance. And so we're just going to throw it in here and find out what di is. I'm just going to swap it around real fast just so that, uh, yeah, I mean, we get a 1 over di equals 1 over the focal length minus 1 over the object distance. And you can already tell before I plug, I know the focal length is negative, the object distance is positive, and so the image distance you can immediately see is going to be positive or negative. Negative. I sub I'm subtracting something for a negative number. Yeah. So the image distance is going to be negative. So it's going to be a virtual image. I have a negative image. It means that a negative image distance means it's ending up on the wrong side of whatever focusing element I'm using. In this case, it's a lens. So it's going to end up on the left hand side of the lens when it should be on the right hand side. I say should be. Also, he may. So. So unless I'm, you know, smoking something, which is always, well, it's not possible for me to be literally smoking something, but figuratively speaking, okay, uh, we should have something like 1 over negative 2.3 minus, uh, I don't know, do you want your 1 over 4? Or not 1 over 4, excuse me, 4, right? 1 over 0.25. Yeah, what did I do? Yeah, I mean, 
But, you know, I'm just trying to keep you on your toes. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Let me instead write out these ugly compound fractions so that I don't make mistakes. That would probably, okay, congratulations. I believe we have now just found out the reason why dioplers are quoted. It's because if you're doing this equation, you don't have to worry about all those funky inverses anymore. All right, one over F is the diop diopter. So you don't have to worry. I mean, you could you could just, instead of one over F, you could just put in the 0.23 there. Excuse me, the 2.3. Right. Yep. So we get something like negative 2.3 minus four. And so we get something like negative 6.3. Not done. Right, negative 6.3 is one over the image distance. So don't forget to invert it at the end. That's the thing I always forget. Okay. Just like the resistances, right? I get resistors in parallel, I add them in inverse, I get my final answer, and I always forget to invert the final answer. I don't know why, I just always forget to do that. And then I say, whoa, that number is way too, uh, that number is way too small. That's what I always end up catching me on it. So at least using Cassie's numbers, I get something like the image should be located at one over 6.3. I got the negative sign, meaning that it's on the wrong side of the lens. It's on the left-hand side of the lens. I don't know, uh, one divided by six is like what, 0.16? So this is roughly, this is roughly 16. Say 0 0.16 meters, about 16 centimeters, give or take. I did that same thing, and it kind of long. Okay, let me go and look at it. Yeah. You had 2.3? I had the same number as No kidding. Okay, let me go and look at it. Wait, is that what you did? Um, the only thing I can, I'm sorry, the only thing I can think of is that maybe it doesn't like negative sign, so I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to double check that. Because the, the, the negative sign isn't really important, it just tells you that it's a virtual. So that's the one thing I'm thinking about. I, I just forgot to do the one over. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, any problem that you make a mistake on, I guarantee you I've made that mistake at least once in my life. Okay. I never, I, you know how I learned physics? By doing them all wrong. If you do them enough times, you get them wrong enough times, you figure out the right way to do it. All right. I guarantee, yeah. Okay, so the one over. My guess is it doesn't like the negative sign, but let me go and check. That shouldn't, you shouldn't penalize you for that. I, I should be more clear about, I just want the distance, the magnitude of the distance, not the number. So let me go and double check that, but that's my guess. Then how would you find the height of the image? Oh, that's a good question. Excellent question. Let's say this, my lens has altered this distance, right? My lens alters the object distance and the image distance, if you will. Takes the object distance and changes it into image distance. How does that proportion apply to magnifications, the heights? Or let me ask you a different question. Does the lens affect the horizontal distances differently than the vertical distances? What your gut tell you? All dimensions are treated the same. In other words, if it alters the horizontal distances, it will alter those in the same manner that it alters the vertical distances. In other words, it preserves the proportions. Okay. So in other words, the proportions will be preserved, which means the image distance over the object distance will be the same as the image height over the object height. It will treat the horizontal distances the same as it treats the vertical distances. 
And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's what we define magnification as. I mean, if, you're, if your image height is larger than your object height, you've magnified it less than you've demagnified it. Yeah, go for it. Isn't the height ratio negative? There might be a negative sign. There's a negative sign in here somewhere uh, to take care of the inversion. So if you if you just want to do absolute values, that's fine. Um, so I could do it like this if you want, or if you want to be more specific, yes, I believe there is a negative sign here to uh, take care of either virtual or real images or inverted heights, whichever way you want to get. Yeah. Yep. You can tell why I hate, well, I don't hate optics. They're kind of cool, but I, I uh, you know, truth be told, it's been four years since I've had to teach this, the optics part. Because of course last year stuff hit the fan and then it made it really hard to actually get this in. So, so you're farther along than, than my class was last year. And I don't think I taught it the year before. So I think it's been, okay, that's three years done. I don't like the negative signs. I try to avoid those negative signs as much as possible. So I'm, I'm also prone to dropping one, which is why the ray diagrams help me out. When I drop a negative sign, but my ray diagram says that there should be a negative sign in there. So that helps me out.
perfect, wouldn't I want to rejoin the call? It should just automatically rejoin me. Ah, Shiza. Okay, I'll have to go back and look and see how far that was. Sorry, Delaney, I didn't even know it left. And that, now Delaney's gone. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. Be nice if it like yelled at you for that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? You have an idea? Or do you want me to go at it? Yes, tell me. You want me to go? See, like one knot. So I've, I've, I've just tried to scale this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I've just tried to scale it so that we have some relative ideas. So the hash marks, um, I, I just use each hash mark to represent the focal length. And so the problem says that it starts two focal, the object is two focal lengths from the first lens. So I, I put it, Wow, I can't count. One, two. So I should put the object right here. Now let's try that again. There we go. Let's make sure I, so I two hash mark. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now I've got the two lenses, which I haven't tried to draw the physical shape on. I just, you know, put some lines there to represent the lenses. Uh, I've separated the two lenses by five hash marks. One, two, three, four, five. And then uh, I've used the X's that represent the focal length of the two individual lenses. So let's get at it. Okay. Now, how do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So forget about the second lens for a second. Okay. Just focus on the first lens. Let's take care of the first lens, then go and worry about the second lens. And okay. do one bite at a time. Just to add insult to injury, why don't I actually record the screen? Okay, so one bite at a time. So we've got a couple of different lines that we need to worry about. So the first one is let's find the top of our object. We will draw a line that goes from the top of our object parallel to the optical axis. And that line, what should it do? Go through the focus. Okay. So let's go ahead and take that line and let's divert it through the focus. Now, I don't know if I can, I probably can't get a straight line at all. There we go. 
goes through the focus. Second line. Let's take it from the top of our object. Where do you want to go with this one? Parallel to the optical axis, hits the, hits the lens, goes through the focus. What's another one of those? Through the focus. Now I've already used that back one, so I've got to go through the focus and go ahead, Sydney. Hits the mirror, goes parallel, excuse me, hits the lens and goes parallel to the optical axis. So you can already see, okay, I've got some idea about where my, my image is gonna be. Third one, go through the optical center of the lens. Okay. What that means is go through dead center right here. So if I go dead center and go, uh, Okay, let's try that again. If I go through dead center right here, that beam should pass through undeflected. Not bad. And so final, again, this is just ballpark, but our final image for the first lens should be right there. Now, you can't say for certain, but ballparkish, it looks like it's about two focal lengths away. Two focal lengths away from the second lens. And you can certainly tell it's inverted. Now, what do we do? Rinse, wash, and repeat with the new, the new lens. Take the image from the first lens, and that becomes the new object for the second lens. So rinse, wash, and repeat. You can, you know, I, I shamefully, I just deleted my lines. I shouldn't have done that. But what we can now do is just rinse, wash, and repeat. Let's now take a ray going from the top of my new object. And that ray, if I can find it, what do we do? Oh, I turned it off. Well, I'm just having all kinds of problems today, aren't I? What we can do is take that ray and go parallel to the optical axis until it strikes the lens. And that one gets directed through the focus. We can take the second one going through the focus, strikes the lens, and then comes out parallel. And the same idea, let me, probably a terrible color. I should have been switching colors in between. Third one, we'll just go from the top through the optical center of the lens and keep going. And so we end up with some Looks like to me that it's going to be slightly inside two focal lengths. So at least it gives you an idea. We should have an upright real image. It's not clear to me if it's going to be magnified, demagnified. That one I'd have to probably get the ruler out and actually do it a little bit better. But you could say it's going to be upright and real. You say, great, that's not good enough. I want to do more. Fine, we can do this with the equations as well. Let's do it with the equation now. Okay. So first off, let's do lens one. And we say, OK, well, 1 over DO. E plus 1 over di equals 1 over f. And because I've done my ray diagrams, I know that do and di are going to be, both be positive. Do is on the left side of the, the, the lens. The image was on the right-hand side. That's exactly where I'd expect them to be. They're both going to be positive. 
I have a convex lens. And so that tells me that my focal length is also positive. So I just run. We end up with something like one over di equals one over f minus one over do. And this is nice. I didn't say what f is, but I gave everything in respect to f. I said that d naught was 2f. So I get 1 over di is equal to, I'm going to do a common denominator here, 2 over 2f minus 1 over 2f. What, did I, what do I get for di? Two F. There we go. Two F. In other words, okay, so it looks like we're a little off here, right? This image should not be, I got it three F. It should be actually over here somewhere. Okay. More accurate, the better, the more careful we are with drawing, the more accurate, accurate we're going to be. Okay. Oh, incidentally, what's the magnification? My object distance was 2f, and my image distance is 2f. What's the magnification? One. It doesn't magnify at all, right? It preserves exactly. Right. So, in fact, I, I guess we could go a little more. The magnification is technically negative one. I don't really care about the negative sign. All right. What's the negative sign mean again? It's inverted. Yeah. The ratio of the heights, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. The magnification would probably be. It's one. That's fine. You get an image of the exact same size, just inverted. So now what do we do? How do I do this algebraically for lens two? I mean, I start off with the same equation. What do I put in? And here's where we have to be careful. What do I put in for the object distance? That's exactly why I'm asking. Do I put in 2f or do I put in 3f? It's 2f. Don't forget, this 2f means that it's 2f away from the first lens. How far away is it from the second lens? If it's 2f from the first lens, how far away is it from the second lens? We said that the lenses are separated by 5f. So that's probably the one place where you have to be careful. You're stringing these together. Be careful is that the image distance, you use the image distance from the first lens, that becomes the new object distance. Don't forget, though, that the object distance has to be with respect to the second lens. Okay. Don't just take this 2f and say, oh, that's the new object distance. We have to be a little more careful. Good. What we get for the lens 2 now, we get 1 over f minus 1 over 3f. Or if we want a common term, we get 3f, 3 minus 3f. And so we get our new image distance as 3f over 2. Unless I did something wrong. Did I do? No, I didn't do anything wrong.
So my ray diagram is crack. Sorry. I mean, at least it tells us it's an upright real image. The place where it fails is that because I drew my image as being 3F from the first lens, I actually ended up with a magnified image at the end of the day that looks like it's 2.5 F from the second lens. What we're getting with the actual algebra, which is by far more precise, is that we should see an image of the same size located at 2F. And at the end, we should get an image somewhere right about here instead. That's okay. I'm more important. I'm more, you know, the image, the, the ray diagram is to just start our conceptualization process anyway. And, and I'd say I'll blame, I'll blame it on the computer, right? It's really hard to like look at a screen and write it correctly. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, this just gives us a conceptualization of what's going on. And if you want to be bulletproof, then yeah, we want to run the numbers. So we get an upright image that's slightly demagnified. And in fact, this had a magnification of 1x. We get the magnification here as well. We have the image distance three halves over the original distance, which was three for the second lens, right? Don't forget, this is the second lens now. So we get something that's something like uh, one half magnification, right? Oh, goody, goody, three divided by three. So we end up with one half. Now, if I recall correctly, the last thing I'll say, and then we'll call it quits. If I recall correctly, the total magnification of the system is the multiplication of the individual magnifications. So for the two lens system, you'd say it's a one half magnification. The one X magnification times the one half magnification that gives you a one half magnification. So the overall, if you wanted to know the total magnification and total, just take the individual magnifications and multiply them together. Just how you get like your 20x magnification on your on microscope objectives. There's six or eight lenses in there. You do one at a time, find the individual magnification, multiply them all together, you end up with like 20 or 40x or yada, yada, yada. And that's how that's how that works. You guys look like you're in a rush. I'll let you go. Have a good start to the week. <laughs>